There we go. Now it's working. I think. Have a look, Brandon, my rape setup. Darn phone. Okay, good. Good evening, everyone. Would everybody get wound up, caught up here? Okay, tonight's topic, ah, Neil Demick here. Tonight's topic is on uh, unicorn. Hooking the uh, the elusive suicide hitch, they call it. Because it's so dangerous and so difficult. Is that uh, hand strap tucked away there, Dirk? Shouldn't be hanging down like that. So. Anyway. Okay. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> So we're going to show you how to hook up the suicide hitch, the unicorn. <laughs> anyway, so we get started here. So <clears throat> most people have a typical farm wagon of some court, and that's what this thing is. Just a rubber turd farm wagon with a pole. Don't move it, Dirk. Now, <clears throat> to hook the unicorn up, you got to put a single tree on the end of the pole. Some people pick it up, Dirk. Some people uh, uh, hanging on a long chain. I haven't really found it necessary for me. Most of my horses' uh, harness is set up nice enough that uh, they're far enough back away from it. I can just hook on the end of the pole. Most of my wagons, we try to have the forethought when we're building them to put a pole underneath the pole in. So put the single tree down there. Flip the ring up on the end of the pole. Flip it up so they can see it. On the end of the pole there. I can get that to zoom. No, I can't zoom it. On the end of the pole down there, it's okay, Derek, just hold it up. Put the neck yoke off for a minute. We have put a ring on the end of the pole when we make it so we can attach stuff like that to it. Okay, put the neck yoke back on there. So when we go to attach it to it, then we use shackle, clevis, a graded one. You can use other things too, but these are nice, they're cheap. You can have a bunch of them in your truck or in your tickle box or whatever. Here you go, Dirk. So you just clevis them onto the end of the pole. Make sure you snug it up good. Hi, Susan. Hi, Chuck. Hi, Cheryl. Make sure you snug it up good with the uh, Crescent Ranch. Good. Pick it up. Kind of show everybody what we've done there. There you go. Right, so the neck yoke tips right in front of the way. There you go. Worse. There you go. So you can see what we've done there. Yeah, that's good, guys. Thank you. So then, <clears throat> you're going to hook up a team, and it'll be just like an ordinary team that you hook up. And then uh, you need line carriers go from like on crystal's bridle there hold it out for him there right and you should have one on the bridle some have it up on the hand but you should have one on the bridle that way if they duck their head or whatever they don't or lift their head they don't get it over a line on you so you can get these you can make these you can buy these they work all right they snap right onto the bridle make sure all snaps turn in we commonly use these because we can hang them up there right on the bridle you put a little piece of tape around here so it don't flip upside down 
And then instead of threading your line through a ring, you can just snap it through, which is all right. And uh, Carol, what's that again, Carol? Ralph. Ralph. She brought us some of these. These are uh, climbing carabiners. They got kind of a neat little latch to them. And that's what she had, Crystal has on her head. You got one just like Crystal's for Jim, Dirk? Where's that other one you had? Okay. <clears throat> so we'll put a couple on Crystal and Jim. There, now it's zooming up. Isn't that funny how it zooms now? And then on Rebel's butt, he's going to be driven like he's a single horse. So to drive uh, Rebel, we've got to put some line carriers up on the on their, on his butt. And I like these ones for that job because they stand up once you get them on there. And it takes some of the traction out of the line. So I like these safety snaps, they call them. Swing Jim up out of the way so we can watch Brian do his thing over there, Derek. Just, maybe just on time, Derek can take him out of the way. See if you watch Brian, he's putting it right up, right up on the Britain ring. The command is back, Derek. And then we put a little tape right down at the bottom, even from flipping around the wrong way. There's other things you can use. You can do all sorts of items. I like these because I can take them on, put them off. They're simple to attach. If I was driving Yukon every day, I'd set up a more permanent system on there. But most of the time when you're doing this stuff, you're doing it for a demonstration or some such. There. So <clears throat> you'll hook up your team as a normal team, and then we'll thread out lines. We want to grab that line for a minute here, guys. Now, most of my lines, grab them by the very top there, are set up. So this is the whole line here, and that's the cross check that buckles on, right? I've got them cut off here. So that when I want to drive four up or whatever, something different, four up or six up or whatever. Hang on to that for a minute right there, Brian. Thank you. I can just buckle on another line. Right? But it also affords me to do other things. When I do this, I can use my six up lines, which are here. And I can run them up to Reb and use them to drive Unicorn. Thank you, Brian. So, if you guys are all gung-ho and ready, any questions before we get going any further? If not, we'll go ahead and hook them up. Bring your horse up here, Dick. Too far up, done. There's lots of ways of hooking up a team. We're just working out of the hitching rail today, so we didn't drive them over. Cross cross checks, right? Make sure there's no twist items on. Thank you. The snap on Reb was for the line carriers. We're gonna run single lines from here all the way up through Crystal and Jim's bridle, through Reb's butt, through his hammerings and to his bit. I'll show you that in a minute. Yeah, do up your cheater strap, son. Oh, it's gone, eh? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Kind of straighten out crystals rich in there, too, bud. Give her a tug at the top. There you go.
under the line and over the tug, see, but there you go. Just a minute, Brian. Now get there, go hook up the horse. County flying, checking for weeds again, probably. I'll get back a step, you too. <laughs> yeah, you can use a carabiner, uh, Kate, or you can use what we call a safety snap, or we have these other gizmos like this, Kate. They work well, too. It's just a snap on the end of a strap. Some call them short spreaders, all sorts of names. So the only real thing that you need to practice before you do this is to make sure the horse you plan on using in the lead drives single very well. If he's very confident of driving straight up and driving out for you well a single you're not going to have any trouble give her that bridge and another yank on crystal at the top son are you a little short maybe maybe you're gonna have to hook a little longer bud i think maybe you're a little short there no come here your tugs undo one let it drop Undo it, let it drop, Dirk, then do your inside one. Yeah, the ones we put on them, Kate, were what are called safety snaps, and they're like a carabiner. They use them a lot for different bits and horse pieces. Uh, they don't have that safety keeper over top of the snap itself, so you got to put a little tape on them, but other than that, they're fine. Okay, Dirk. Now we got to thread the lines out for your unicorn. Over top of my lines, Dirk. No, you went underneath. Come on, bud. Go over top. Stop and go through the line ring. Some guys don't like doing this, but I like doing that. Going through the line ring help keeps it from getting up over the hay all the time. I've used short spreaders, but they don't work that well either. For the mm, bigger hitches, I have extra special ones for that job, but mm, they're a little overdone for this job. Okay, turn the head so everybody can see what you guys are doing. You run the line through. The line ring and then through Jim's line keeper same with crystal see run through there that way if they put their head up now pull enough slack you guys so you have enough so you can hook up to him okay that'll probably do don't drop it in no mud though Dirk set it back against single tree okay you can swing uh, rebel around Now, for this, you take them lines and you run them through that line ring that you put on the top of the britching. Right, Dirk? Mm -hmm. See up there? Yeah, it's a unicorn hitch, Frank. Yep. The suicide hitch, they call it. Some guys call it. Oh, it's a suicide hitch. It's no dangerous than any other lot of different hitches. Uh, down one. Okay. Yeah, if you missed a little bit, Frank, just go back when we're done. Um, So, <clears throat> usually I hook the tugs out longer, so if anything comes loose, 
you don't bump your leader too much. And then you got to tape single trees on them. Because if you don't tape them, they can uh, come undone. Most of the time, my lines for this job are, well, you know, like 11 feet per row. That's 22 feet, and then some behind just the 30 feet ain't hardly long enough. Derek, go back up to Reb. Check your line. Supposed to run through your line ring, buddy. Right? Hello, guys. Just take the halter shank off when you're ready, yeah? Make sure that bridle's nice and smooth up there, Derek. So, when you're done, make sure you double check everything. Make sure your lines are run through. Nothing's hung up. Okay, somebody will have to come up. Reb's pretty good, so we'll just leave him stand there, guys. Oh yeah, I need a camera person. Everything good to go there, Brian? Yep. Camera's filming good? Yeah, I think we're zoomed in. You don't want to zoom just. No, I think we are zoomed in. Oh, there it goes, I got it. Well, the big one, if you're not driven this one before, you want to make sure you got your wheel team, like a four up. I want to make sure you get the wheel team kind of gathered up and checked in place. Uh, your lead horse, right? You want to kind of make sure you got him steered off straight to start with. Right? And then you want to step him off first. So grab, walk on, grab. There you go, bud. You want him to kind of snug up on the snug a bit. You don't want him pulling the whole load. him dragging that single tree either. We like the lever bits because they're adjustable. So if you have a horse that's lean and heavy, you can stop and move them down. If you have a horse that's really light, you can stop and move them up. Holding the lines. If you're going to drive unicorn for the first little while, this is probably a pretty good way to run one. Your wheel team's always the bottom. Your top one's always the leader. That way you can get a hold of them and just line easy. Right? Now we're using a wagon that's for your average person, right? This isn't a show hitch. This isn't hitched up for showing. This is if you just want to practice driving unicorn or if you think you need an extra horse on a trail ride for the extra load. Say your mother-in-law come and she says through a bunch of junk in your wagon needs some more horsepower. <clears throat> So that's why we show it with the clevis on the end. Most show hitches have a hook on the end of the pole for hitching that particular item up. We don't necessarily need that. You just need the, the right kind of a shackle system. You want to make sure it's tight. Sometimes if I'm going to go for a longer drive, I'll put a little piece of tag wire in that clevis so it can't come through. So when you turn, you want your leader to turn just a little bit faster than your wheel horse. A lot of show horse guys want to see that hitch just fan, but you can't turn sharp corners with a fan. So if you really want to learn how to drive, you got to learn how to drive with your leader that can turn a little faster than the rest of you. So when I go to turn, I'll take slack on my leader and then just pull, right? And he should turn just slightly faster than the other. Some guys, like I said, they drive show horses. They don't like that. They want to see them fan when they turn. I said, well, that's great in the arena, but not so good in real life. If you're out in the trails or you're out in the Blackfoot or on the back front of your road, there's times when you're going to have to curl that hitch into a horseshoe sheet to come out or in. Sure, right, Rip. Some guys get all worried that maybe he's not perfectly in the center. I'm not worried. 
we'll pick it up. Go for a little drive before you make a whole bunch of adjustments. I think we'll make one on gravel there. We haven't downed one in a bit. You heard us adjust that earlier. We're going to change that and we're going to put them up in the bar. So we just moved him from here, he was in this one, up into here. Hmm? Oh. Those are the ones I installed earlier. Just have some tape on them so that they can't come undone. I'm just going to adjust this one. So she's in what we call in the bar right now. Move her what we call down one. Reb was kind of driving a little loose and these guys were kind of leaning on a bit a bit so we changed it we put Jim and Crystal down and we put Reb up so Reb should be able to pull put a little more pressure on the bit and these guys will ease off a bit. All right walk on. There we go. See how Reb's up? Tugs are tight. All right. Jim and Crystal backed off a bit. My lines are now equal. That's the nice part of them. Jim, he likes to trot, so he's asking. Don't need to trot yet, Jim. You're good, buddy. See how the tugs are tight on the lead horse? You don't want them pulling the whole load. So you gotta watch your wheel team's britching. If your wheel team, wheel team's britching, Pulled right into their butts. You let that lead horse pull them too hard. So, right now it's pretty good. Britain's coming loose when they walk. But I'll let Rebel stretch out and I'll hold back on the wheel team. And you can see the Britain seat get pulled into their butts. See? Right? See how it's pulling right in? So you don't want that. I'm working your lead horse too hard and bothering your wheel horse by pulling on the Britain seat. Back a bit. Let the loop out a bit. Adjust, adjust, adjust. And I'll keep refraining this all the time, but try try to refrain from doing the finger walk. Don't do this to adjust your line. If you're doing this and something happens, right? Bird flies out of the ditch and poops your horse or steps on a rock or whatever, hold on with two fingers, that line will whoop, gone. So if you go to adjust, adjust from the back. Just loosen your hand and pull. If anything happens, you just squeeze your hand, you have it. So your goal is you want to learn finally get that horse to walk. So he's right dang center in the front of the pole. Right? But if he isn't there right away, it's not to worry. Hey good. The trooper on that horse is way too loose, but nowhere near just itself. Thank you guys. up and put it where it should be, right? You can see the wear holes, bud. Okay? You got a loose trooper. If you're driving along, go ahead and adjust all your stuff. Here's only one trooper, it's on, on Rebel. You can see the holes where you're supposed to be in the crystal, so 
Stop. Stop. Remember I said you to double check all that stuff, son? Alright, log on. Do I ever worry about them running away? No. We uh, do a lot of training before we start loping them. Once we've driven them for quite a while, then we'll start asking them to trot. Alright, step up. So when we first get them going to do this kind of stuff, we'll ask them to trot. We'll try it for a ways. And then we'll ask them to walk. Walk. At any time, you want to be under control, right? You don't want to just throw your lines away and let them trot off because they'll slow off. All right. like this first thing you want to do take a little line on your weavers oh six eight inches okay. get your hands set nicely make contact ask them to back back Get the hell over, just say ha. Eliminates the confusion. He doesn't hear blah, 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 blah. He just hears the command. Grab, walk on. Good boy. So now we got him way up. I don't have a lot of line for backing. Get your line adjusted. Try to keep your hands out in front of you. Don't get too choked up so you won't have room enough to move. Some show guys like to say they want to keep their hand in a four foot square box. That's fine for show ring, not too practical for pleasure driving. But if you want to practice it, that's cool. But... So we're going to turn, we'll take a little line. Rep turns slightly faster than the weaver. confident, very confident single horse driver. So if you're going to drive single or drive unicorn, pick the horse you want as your leader, start driving them single. He's really confident, smooth at it, doesn't worry or fret about the other teammate, but isn't looking for another horse to lean on all the time. So when you finally put him up there on unicorn, he isn't... Uh, wandering around looking for that support of the teammate. He's confident enough in driving single, he just drives off. Suicide itch my foot. It's no more scary or dangerous than, than three abreast, four up, four or six up, any of it. It's not harder to drive. You just gotta be smart. But one of the best things you can do is get your horse you have an adjustment. 
Now, if you're driving single horse, that's one horse, that's generally one horse pulling on your lines, it's a lot lighter than two horses pulling on your line. Yet, you don't want to lose contact with your lead horse's head. You don't want your lines to come loose. So the trick to that is, lower your lines on your wheel team so they lighten up. Raise the lines on your lead horse so they tighten up. And then you have good contact the whole time. And you don't lose line. The only time you'll have a horse jackknife on you <clears throat> is when you lose contact with his mouth and he has no place to, no guidance. That's what he uses for guidance is the bit. If he has no guidance, a lot of times they'll just keep turning until they try and find it. Usually if they keep turning until they try and find it, they usually end up standing here right beside you. lines are for. When you make a corner with a horse, you never throw one line away. You know, pull on this one and release with that one and throw a line away. Because that compounds the signal in his mouth and he turns way too fast for you. So once again, whoop. To make it a successful hitch, you got to have line pressure on your leaders and <clears throat> on your lead horse, more line pressure than you would on your wheel team. Hey, okay, Derek, let's go up and adjust that. We'll back up into the or down one again. And we'll show everybody how the lines change again. Crystal, stop rubbing. Crystal. Crystal. Now, if you have a new horse, or horses you don't work with as much as we get to work with these guys, I would suggest taking a halter shank up with you before you undo any line. So that you have some measure of control on them. These guys, we adjust and do stuff all the time, so. Rebel's been at it now for 18 years, 16 years, 16 years. So I trust them. If you're by yourself and you want to adjust the line, you're driving, say, a single horse on a cart, go tie it up, adjust the line, and then untie it and go. Okay, all right, walk on. You'll notice how the line changed, the pressure has changed completely. There's actually two the line, see that? And before, it was right tight, right? It's just a difference in the bit and how you adjust it. So if you want that lead horse to always have contact with his mouth, you can move him up into the bar. So he's like a regular driving horse. And you would move each guys down one. So that they're lighter. That way, all four lines feel the same weight and hands are there about.
questions you see on there, man? Megan asked who the team is. We got Crystal Jim on the wheel and Rebel up front. Yeah. Pretty versatile hitch to drive. A little more agile than four breath. Or four up on I mean. Way more agile than four breath. But a little more than four up. Uh, say you're in city traffic or whatever. You can make a single horse scoot around in traffic pretty good. Very good team walk. <clears throat> Same with fan in your team. When you want to fan a team, whoop. You want to make sure you got good contact. All right, Reb Haw. Reb. Haw. Right. Whoop. All right, Reb G. tension on them right and then when I duck them back I'm ducking with my hand again put a little more tension on them when they work on them they'll get so they walk in the center so it's not so scary, it's not so suicidal to drive this game. I think it says, does a contact go directly to the bit or just one side? For which action, Megan? You want to always keep contact with both sides. Yes. You even when you're contact. turning. Yeah, you want to be in contact with both sides of the bit. The line goes straight up to Rebel bit on both sides. If I don't do the finger walk, I can't take a lot of line at once. Sure you can. You can reach over and grab both lines and pull. It's actually easier to do it this way than it is the other way, but hard. And when you adjust simple, you can just pull a little bit or slide out a little. You can slide out a lot. Pull it back in. If you're having trouble with your line sliding out, you're pulling all the time gathering slack, then you got a problem with hanging on to your line. Not so much with the way the lines are being held, the more you know, the grip you have. If you're having constant trouble and just cannot squeeze hard enough to hang on to your lines, lower your bits. Put your lines down on your bits and lessen the line pressure being put on the line. That will make it easier for you to hang on to. So we'll ask them to draw it. Alright, walk on. Step up, there you go. So your line pressure is going to increase all the way across the board. How your horse is drive is going to change. Drifting off the side bit, we'll bring the stem over a little bit.
That's a fairly easy rolling trot. They can hold that trot for quite a while. the line goes through the line ring on the hame, up through the line keeper on Jim's bridle, and up through the line street barrier on Rebel's Britchin, up through his line ring and through his bit. There's no place there that a line could get caught or bound, and having that line run through the line ring where he cross checked where uh, doesn't seem to interfere with a cross check at all. There's a couple of ways you can hold lines. This is a pretty good one if your arms are tired or whatever, you got lots more power. But you can also run it down from the top like so. I like to leave the top finger out. It allows me room to adjust easier. If you can run it through the top line too, that's not a problem. Or over the top finger. And then you can turn by rotating your wrist. Right? Just rotate your wrist and you can steer. So it's a good way to practice too. And you should get to be comfortable with both of them because there is going to be a time when your hands play out driving one way and you can switch and you keep switching up. You keep switching up all the time. You, uh, your hands don't get too tired. So you just got to keep an eye on your single tree, right? Make sure your lead horse isn't pulling too much. A good honest horse will want to keep his tugs snug tight. It's pretty hard to keep it snug tight. Three horses on the empty way. Just want them to get touched up all the way across. Take a little outside line on them for this time, and then choose them up, and they'll turn in for you. First thing you want to turn corners fast if you're ready for them anyway. Megan's asking how you get your just your lead horse to slow down. Try to make sure you turn wide corners at the start so you get the hang look good. It's like a horse trailer, you don't want to be turning too soon. You bring them right around.
if you can, utilize the hitching rail. Federal horse trader makes a good hitching rail. Here, stop rubbing. Stop rubbing. So the first thing you do unhooking is your tugs. Always your tugs first, never your lines. And don't get in a damn hurry to pull a bridle off. Some guys are always a hurry to yank bridle off. Oh, geez, I gotta get the bridle off. Leave the damn bridle on there till you're done unhooking. It's designed so they can wear it all damn day. They don't need to take it off right away. There's no way that should be that complicated, son. Why don't you go over to that side so you can see what you're doing? Hey? There. Pull your legs back and you get them up and out of the way of your wheel beam. Not right, but Just on doing the neck yoke next. Yeah. Be mindful of whatever single tree you put up there. That wheel team's got to carry that on their neck with a pull that drops to the ground. So you don't want to make one out of 45 pounds of pipe. Just a nice simple wooden. Okay, now you can tie them up here. I'm going to go up and show them that. Yep. I make lots of noise in the process, apparently. Come on up here. So here is... A better view of the front end here. So this is our neck yoke. This one and that just goes up there. So this one here is the single tree that we're using. There we go. So this is the ring that we have just on the front of our our pole. We just keep it on the on the neck yoke stop here, um, and we try to put that on all of our wagons or something similar to it anyway. Um, and then this is just a regular single tree. And we just run this clevis through to hold it on. You want to try and keep it straight too. You see how this, uh, nothing here has a bad twist in it. If you have a, like a twisted clevis or whatever, it can put some pressure on here. You want to try and you know, keep everything proper. Yeah, if you just use a ring and a clevis and not the two rings, you'd end up with a twist. Yeah, like if we tried to put this one through here without this ring, this would want to be standing straight up and then you'd have to put a lot of pressure on everything else Yeah. Just an old straw hat. But it was pretty hot when we came out here, Gordon. Go ahead and hang your lines up and undo your cheetah strap there, Brent.
Yeah, so that that's your unicorn. That's see, it's not so scary. It's not such a bad hitch to drive. I mean, the only real thing to it is to make sure your lead horse is a good, confident single horse driver. If he drives really good, confident single, he's going to drive really good. Well, thanks, Jamie. He's going to drive really good uh, up there on a unicorn. Not be worrying and fretting about a teammate. Most guys, they just go ahead and pick one. They figure it'll work. Hook it up. And of course, that horse spends all afternoon wandering around up front there trying to find the right person or right horse to lean on. And he ain't got her, so... Not a lot, Jamie. Hands are still pretty swollen. If you can see it, I got no knuckles. <clears throat> anyway. All right, guys. So that's a unicorn. That's a unicorn. That's what we do. It's a nice, simple farm hitch. Works really well. It's a good thing to practice. Like I said, it's not just a show hitch. It's, it's a fun hitch to drive. Adds a little extra horsepower, especially in the hills if you're on a long, long one. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, guys. Have a good night. Say good night, guys.